What's up guys, welcome back to SGMX and on this episode I'm going to be doing the assembly process on this 1998 CR125. Let's get into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install this Wisco crank bearing into my crank spot. What I want to do is I want to try and get this area to like 250 to 280 degrees. Two hundred seventy-one degrees so far, and what I'll do is I will just smack this bearing in ever so slightly, and I will use a brass hammer to do so. Take that bearing, set it in. Just give her a couple light taps around. sure it's in. After that's in, take that, leave that off to the side, let that cool. And I'm going to repeat the same process over here on this one. Take my brand new Wisco bearing. It was in the freezer. Put it in. Now you can look on the inside here and make sure that it's seated all the way against, all the way around. Now I'm going to put in my power valve bearing. To do so, I like to heat the outside of this up as well. Well as the inside. And I'll take my power power valve bearing, drop that right into place, grab a socket. Give her a couple taps, she should fall right in. Some assembly lube while it's still warm. Help cool it off. We'll take this and leave this set for a little while until it cools down. And the first one we're going to do is that one with that lip. We're going to put that one in first. That one goes right here. We'll heat that up, give her a couple taps in. Shouldn't take much heating. Make sure this lip is facing out, and same thing, like I said, this one doesn't take much beating at all. You set it in there. You have these little keepers here to put in, and they go with, let's see if I can get, that side there is going to be where your screw sits, right inside, it's a little seat for it. Go ahead and get your shift drum one in. This one just takes a couple light taps around the outside. Take that one, set that one in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock tight those keepers in. Still a lot. I'll take it and rub it in like that. That must have flipped around at some point. So 
set that, screw that in. Before I tighten that down, I'm going to get this other one in there. Same thing, some Loctite on this. Well, this is in. Tighten those down, you don't want them to come loose. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this one up, move over to the other side, which would be a right side case. We'll heat this up here for your transmission. Should be plenty hot enough. Now we'll take this bearing, slide it in, give her a couple taps. Now that, that one's in, seat it against, we'll switch over to this side. This one's going to take a smaller bearing. That one's install, installed all the way. Next, we're going to move over to this one here. And this bearing is the shift drum, the other side of the shift drum. Heat this up just a little bit. Nothing too crazy on that either. Slides right in. These little keepers here. And these hold this in place. They go right into a little locking tab. You should have two of them. Both of them. Are identical doesn't matter which side they go to they're not oriented or anything like that and then you're just gonna put a little a little bit of Loctite on these as well Now this is all set and done. See those little little tabs there? Those are what I was talking about by those little stop on it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this assembly lube and I'm going to put it on the inside of these bearings. Put some on the crank bearings as well. Doesn't need a lot. Work that in bit of assembly lube on these that I put in earlier. Now I'm going to grab the other case. Same thing, put some assembly lube on these. And you can never go wrong with putting assembly lube on anything. Now that I'm just going to bring it up off the edges and work it in. Spin all that. Spin everything. And now we'll move on to putting seals in. Now I'm a big Wiseco guy, so I'm I'm a huge fan of Wiseco. I'm using a Wiseco crank, Wiseco bearings, Wiseco gaskets, and Wiseco seals. Um, all purchased from Wiseco themselves. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this crank seal on the stator side, and to do so, you don't want to install it this way. You want it to seat in this way on the crank side, on the stator side. You don't want to go too far with it. You want it just flush with this here and you want to make sure it's square all the way around. Now that that one's installed, we'll move over to this seal here. <clears throat> your output shaft seal and same thing here you just want it to just be flush just a little below not much at all and you want to make sure that that's square all the way around as well 
because you still want this bearing in here to turn free. Next, we're going to install this seal here. And that's going to be this little guy here. I just want that flush there. This seal here is going to go the same way. And I unfortunately, I don't have a seal driver big enough for this one. So I'm going to get it started. I'm actually going to switch to a rubber mallet. Make sure that still spins free. And that you're flush with this all the way around. No, that's, that's it for this. We're going to go back to this one here. We're going to put this one in. This one you can just push by hand. We're going to go ahead and put our bearing in. So when installing this, you're going to have the open face of the small one is going to go towards the bearing. So it's going to go in like that there. And it's not going to take a lot. You can just use hand pressure for this. But you want to make sure that it's square all the way around. This one here, the fatter outside seal is going to be facing with this open collar towards the outside, towards the pump, like this. And same thing with this. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to install this either. So just use your fingers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this assembly lube here. Put it on the shaft of the water bearing of the water pump. And I'm going to push that through from this side, turning it as I go through. And now, now remember to put this seal or this copper washer in there. And then I always like to take a little bit of blue Loctite. Put some blue Loctite in there. Tighten that down. And now to do so, I'm going to grab a wrench on this side and a 10 millimeter for this side. I'll grab that 10 millimeter. And for now, let's take and tighten this down. And I'm going to take this and put this right here like that. Just give it a little tighten. Nothing too crazy. Now we have one last seal. We're going to put it in. Push it by hand just like the rest of them. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start the assembly process. We're going to put the trance in and the crank in. Let's get it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, make sure you have your washer on here. We're going to install, just set it in there for now. Then we're going to take this one here. Spin it all together. A little bit more of this assembly lube to it here. Spin that around on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shift fork in the bottom. And the one that goes in the bottom is usually marked L. The one that goes up top is not. Now we'll take this, we'll slide that back, make sure this is all the way in place. We'll put this bottom one in first. Take that one, put it in. We're going to put assembly lube all the way across this here. 
Don't be shy with the assembly lube. You can never use too much, like I was saying. Put that one in. Make sure everything slides freely. Take this one. Put that one in place. More assembly lube. There's your neutral crank that's been in the freezer. It's frozen. Make sure that's all in place. Some people use grease right here. I always use Yama Bond. And I always put Yama Bond around that as well. And then you'll put that in place. When by pushing it down, you'll have a little access Yama Bond. You'll smear that across the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my gasket. And the Yama Bond just helps hold it all together. Helps seal it all together real well. Make sure everything starts to go together. I just like to take my mallet and tap it and we can start to slide in all of our bolts I always take put a little Loctite on them now we're going to take our 8 millimeter tighten them all down Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gasket and cut it flush. I'm going to cut this gasket here flush as well. As well as this one. Yama bond. Clean it all up, make it look good.